let's talk about this thing from Mike. What is it? MikeFarrell.com. So Mike Farrell, he used to be like a respectable person in the recruiting space. And I think he got, was he? yeah, he was mm. always like, people were sort of like, okay, my, like, thanks Mike. Like he really, he really thought he, he calls himself the godfather of recruiting, um, which did anyone else ever call him that? I'm not totally sure. Um, but he was at a rivals. I think that whole thing fell apart. And now he has, I don't know if he was fired or what. I, I just know that he doesn't work there anymore. Um, and now it's like Mike that he does it's recruiting and, and college football updates and stuff. And he has commissioned some writer here to do an article about potential candidates. If Jim Harbaugh were to leave Michigan and Josh Heupel was on this list and the clown that wrote this thing, not only said that Josh Heupel is on the list, uh, but he also took like a shot at Tennessee and the article. What, what did it say, Zach? I said something about uh, regard. Even the most uh, diehard of Tennessee fans needs to admit that Michigan is a much better job than Tennessee, or something like that. It was just, you know, you, you kind of get used to that stuff from the the media outside of Knoxville that kind of throws that stuff around pretty pretty regularly. It seems like. I mean, at what point? What does Tennessee have to do to get that respect? back obviously that was uh the power i mean it was a powerhouse in the late 90s early 2000s considered that um obviously lost that for a long time but what about this season if you're a serious person and this guy that wrote that clearly isn't if you're a really serious person what about michigan compared to tennessee this season goes michigan is markedly better look okay they re they reached the playoff they lost they won as many playoff games as Tennessee did this season. They did win the Big Ten, but the Big Ten's a joke. It's a fake league that no one respects. So they did win the Big Ten. They have a good set of players. But what about Michigan this season? Like they have a similarly sized stadium, a similar sort of donor pool, similar resources. I would actually say Tennessee has a leg up in, in terms of recruiting. Tennessee is much closer to the sort of breadbasket of recruiting down here in the South. Um and, you know, there's nothing about that Michigan job that jumps off the page like, oh, look at this. Michigan has it's wasn't Michigan still the winningest program of all time. But like the bulk of those wins came in like the 1930s. It's not. <laughs> and they, they uh, I believe they won a national championship prior to Tennessee's last national championship. I think what the year before if I'm thinking correctly. Uh, well, a couple of years before, I think it was Nebraska the year before. Okay. Yeah. So it, it was in that time leading up to yeah. these 98 national championship was the last time they won a national championship. So what exactly from this person says, Michigan is way better. Josh Heupel would jump at the opportunity to go up there. I maybe I'm seeing everything with my Tennessee bias, but I just give me a break. This and, and everybody, all of these national guys say garbage like this. What give me compelling evidence here. That's, because nobody has it. Yeah, I, I don't see it either. I think there's two different conversations. One, the conversation about what the better job is. I I hate that conversation so much, and I wrote about it a little, but didn't go into a lot of detail. I mean, basically, my thoughts are there. You know, Alabama was not Alabama before Nick Saban went there uh, for a period of time. They they had some down years. Uh, they they weren't the same juggernaut that they are now. If you looked at Alabama. 2005 2006 you're not sitting there saying like this is the best job in america so a lot of it has to deal with perception of where the program is at that time and when i think about best jobs i think about what what can the program be and i think there's like probably going to be more than this but i think there's like 15 to 20 maybe programs that can win a national that can consistently compete for a national championship every single year if you have the right coach in place because they've got the resources They've got the the donor base, the alumni. They've got the fan base to, to drum up interest. They have all these things going for them. And I think Alabama, Ohio State, uh, Tennessee, LSU, Florida, Georgia, Auburn, like all those SEC schools, and Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State, Texas, Oklahoma, USC, all those programs are in that mix. You get the right person in charge, you can go compete for championships. Michigan competed for a championship this year. Tennessee still competed for a championship. They're in the playoff conversation. They're in that competition, uh, just just like some of those other programs. 
that's to me what determines what the best job is. And I don't think you can put one above any of them. Cause I think if Nick Saban went to Tennessee, if he went to Penn state, if he went to Texas, that he'd be doing the same thing he is at Alabama. I think he could easily replicate the success if he would have started at the same age at the same time at any of those programs. So to me, it's like, you know, where, what has the best vision for you? Where do you fit best? I think there's a lot, it's not black and white. There's a lot of, real life conversations that go into these uh decisions and i don't see the the pull for hypo to want to leave tennessee to go to michigan i don't i don't understand that at all he's got things rolling at tennessee now he's got his guys here his staff that we you know we, we just talked about him promoting a joey hosley the offensive coordinator he's got a, a nice system in place He's really getting the build off of that and to go to Michigan. And yeah, it's in a good spot. Whoever gets, if Harbaugh does leave for the NFL, whoever takes that job will be stepping into a pretty good situation coming off of a playoff appearance. But you still have to, you still have to restart. You still have to start over. You still have to learn everybody's in the name and the building's name. You have to learn all the support staff, all this different stuff. Like that's just, uh, that's a lot to have to go through after just two years at Tennessee. And for what? I mean, he showed at Tennessee this year that he can compete for a championship, that he can be in that conversation. One bad night in South Carolina. It's not like they couldn't get past Alabama. They couldn't get past LSU. They couldn't get past Florida. They just had a bad night against South Carolina. That's all it was. Like, that's correctable. I think the one argument you you could make, and I don't know that this necessarily makes Michigan a better job, but it makes it an easier job, um, is that the only thing standing in your way is Ohio State. And at Tennessee, it's Ohio, it's uh, Georgia and Alabama. You have two programs in your way at Tennessee. You have one in your way at at Michigan. Um, and I mean, and I would say that the rest of the Big Ten is, <laughs> I mean, just choose your adjective there, garbage. Let's just put it that way. It's bad. It, I mean, the Purdue played in the Big Ten championship game. Give me a break here. Don't ever when Ohio state fans try to act like they actually play a real schedule, I just laugh in their face. I'll put it that way. Um, that is one thing that I could say, okay, it's easier to win at Michigan. It is. I think if Jim Harbaugh takes over the Tennessee job, he probably, it takes him three, four years to get this train going again. Um, running the sort of, you know, Ant antiquated offense that he does. It's not, you know, it's not what Hypel is doing where Hypel system is almost completely based around sort of maximizing lesser talent. I mean, that's not, that's not the point of it exactly, but it's what it does. Um, and you know, it, the, the system in Michigan with Harbaugh was hard nosed old time, great defense, but it, all of that stuff. And like, that would take to, to come to Tennessee and do that. You're going to have to get to Georgia's level to get to where Michigan was in the Big Ten. And that's not happening. <laughs> I mean, like that's that's so hard to do. So you have to play the game like Heupel has and sort of do this workaround with this system that you have. Um, and so, yes, that conversation in terms of what job is better is completely reductive to just off offhand just be clear if you didn't look at it with the orange colored glasses domestic job is clearly better first of all michigan's in a tundra that sucks the weather here is way better so there's that too you know not everybody loves to live out there although hypel hypel is from the dakota so maybe he's used to that he's what, true South Dakota. yeah I but i mean he's he's moved around he hasn't really shown that he's uh, a midwest guy by any means no. i mean he's fit right into the south he was at UC, ucf for three years in florida seems to love knoxville i mean the guy praises knoxville every chance he gets in tennessee in general so i, I don't think that it's like oh i want to go back to michigan i think i think you know you remember in 2014 this conversation came up with butch jones right? yes <laughs> it's his second year and Butch won seven games in his second year we thought it was really really impressive he ended up getting an extension because of this michigan michigan talk and at the time you know we're i don't think we love butch jones but we we're like well they, they won a bowl game we haven't done that in five years that's that's nice or, or longer uh, you know, that that made some sense because he's from Michigan. You know, he coached at Central Michigan. He grew up in Michigan. He had a legitimate connection to that part of the country, and he probably would prefer to be there uh, other than Tennessee at that time. I wouldn't have been surprised if, you know, if Michigan really would have wanted him if they would have made a strong run at him. 
that's not the case with this. There are no connections to Michigan for Heupel. I, I do think the only thing I worry about is if Brent Venables is fired, they send Bob Stoops to Heupel, just total Mia culpa, you know, grand apology type deal, begging him to come back to Norman. I'm not saying that Heupel would go. I, I really don't know. Like, I'm not, I don't think anybody knows because you're not in Heupel's head. He doesn't really talk about that kind of stuff. So I don't, I don't know what he would choose to do, but I do think like that would be concerning. Like, okay, what's he going to do? You know, it came up last year. He only been at Tennessee for one year and he kind of sent a tweet, kind of dispelled all that stuff before it really even got started. So, I mean, good on him for that. Hopefully he would the next time, but that's, that's the only situation I see at all that maybe could entice him. And again, we don't know how, how those wounds are. I mean, Hypo really doesn't talk about that stuff a lot, but he still has reverence for that time in his life because he has talked about, especially being in the Orange Bowl. He he won the Orange Bowl as a player to win a championship, and he's talked about his teammates, and he had former teammates in Miami, uh, you know, this past weekend for the Orange Bowl. So that is part of his life that means a lot. Just because of what happened with Bob Stoops in 2014 when he got let go, doesn't change the fact that he still has fond memories of playing there at Oklahoma. And I'm sure most of his memories there are probably pretty fond outside of that last year. So I do think that, you know, maybe down the road, there is some chance that, that he has a change of heart towards that whole situation. But again, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves there and we don't really know for sure what he would or wouldn't do in that situation. Yeah, I completely agree. It's, it's a kind of, we'll cross that bridge when it comes kind of situation as far as that goes. But with this Michigan thing, I, I would put it this way to put a bow on it. Worst case scenario to me is that it's a situation where he uses it as leverage to get the biggest raise possible. Because the thing is, I mean, Heupel's about to get paid. I mean, he's going to get I, – I, and it's it was already going to be huge. But if Michigan does actually flirt with him, I, I <laughs> you might be talking like – Ten million dollars for this. It's gonna guy. be really <laughs> interesting to see. I'm I'm really intrigued to see what it is. Me too. Me he needs to be ab- among the highest paid in the SEC. I think he's like in the middle or lower half right now. As it is, it's not. It's, I mean, he's making less than than Drinkwitz at Missouri after his latest extension because he can win six games in a year. So, <laughs> I, I'm interested to see how much hype will push this for it. I mean, knowing what we know about him, like the kind of person he is, obviously you're going to make money. You're doing this job. You're away from your family more than you want to be. You want to be paid for it. And I, I have no problem with that. Just the same deal as the players. But how much does he push for? Does he want to be like the second highest paid, third highest paid? You're not going to surpass Saban or Smart, obviously, but do you get up there like that number three territory? Or is he okay with just like a modest raise to $8 million, if, if that's modest, $8.5 <laughs> or something? And uh, using some of that other money on, on staff hires or on some of that stuff, it'll be it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out. Kirby Smart's making ten and a half this year. Yeah, you're not going to go past that. I and he'll probably I, get a raise himself. I'm sure. I mean, that's yeah, just I mean, kind of the nature of the game. You have to for recruiting purposes. Like, mm-hmm. obviously, Smart's job's pretty secure. Heupel's job's pretty secure. But Drinkwitz in that situation, he probably got at that extension so he can talk about it on the recruiting trail. They'll still yes. fire him if they want to, and they probably will after next year if he goes six and seven again. I, I kind of, yeah, if Missouri has enough pride to do that, I'm not convinced. <laughs> but um, I, I just judging from that, Kirby's making 10 and a half. You're basically, you know, you're number two in the SEC East. You're right behind him. You made a New Year's Six bowl game, blah, 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 blah. Best, best season since 2001. Realistically, best season since the national championship season, if we're being totally honest, I know. Um, but uh, you take all of that into consideration, and I nine and a half is would be like my guess. Um, it just that's just college football today, man. Uh, it's big, I mean, big, big money. Like five million was a like you're paying. Yeah, you, you're paying him five million. Like that's and a the, lot. The thing is, this the craziest part is that if he got paid nine and a half million, the man's getting underpaid. He's not going to pay what he's worth. Like oh, if yeah. he was, if he was a CEO of a corporation that had as much money flowing through it as the University of Tennessee football program does, he would make more than nine and a half million dollars. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, who? It, it's 
it's crazy, but that's uh, that's the way things go. And so, uh, if Tennessee has that much money to give to Heupel, the play, I mean, go back to our last point about Jalen Wright and everything. The players want a chunk of that too. So, you know, is it crazy for them to ask for some of the money that they asked for? Uh, you know, food for thought there. But uh, otherwise, I Heupel's not going to Michigan. In my personal opinion, I don't see that at all i think he could leverage it if it really did come to fruition who knows but if it really did i think he could leverage it for more money here but to me that's like worst case scenario as far as this goes you, you don't have to be careful people remember when you do things like that Red um espe especially if he turned around and had a a far worse season next year which barnes did after he flirted with ucla he did that started making five million bucks and and said, you know, basically, if UCLA had just paid me, I would have left. And then he had a stinker of a season the next year. And we were like, OK, Rick, time to step it up. You're making five million bucks. Go ahead. And he thankfully he has won an SEC championship last year. We we know what's happening there. But, um, yeah, pe people do remember that. So you it's a it's a tightrope to walk. But to me, that's the worst thing that come out of this. He's he's not going to Michigan. Yeah, the only reason it's really even a brought up i think is because there is no obvious answer for michigan if harbaugh leaves and i do True. think harbaugh will leave i think he i mean he wanted to leave last year the vikings didn't offer him the job after he spent four hours a whole afternoon in minnesota and everybody knew he was there interviewing and they were just waiting and i don't know what happened in that interview but he left without the offer and uh, the Vikings went another direction, but yeah, if he leaves there, there is no obvious answer. Like even Matt Campbell at Iowa state, I mean, he was four and eight this year. The shine has kind of worn off him. I've always thought that he was just a, a younger Butch Jones anyway, with his catchy cliches and his slogans all over the place. And he's not, not somebody I was ever real high on whenever he got mentioned with some of the Tennessee jobs. I, I don't, I don't know where they would, turn to be honest uh, that would that would be definitely be an interesting coaching search i mean i threw lane kiffin out there uh last week just because you know he doesn't stay anywhere long he seems to be disillusioned with everything going on at Ole miss as far as nil efforts and, and all of that and the auburn deal got totally blown up i think because of that early report and some other factors may be there i mean michigan might get to a point where they need some life you know into the program and kiffin you know, for two years, his first two years are fun, but then he kind of runs out of steam after that. It's happened every single place he's been. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if he gets his name in there if, if if that job does come open like we think. We shall see. And if, if that Michigan job does come open and things start swirling around, we'll talk about it on, on future Big Orange podcasts. But until then, the, even this situation is kind of a, We'll cross that bridge when it comes sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm Charlie Burris. That is Zach Reagan. Thanks so much to everybody for watching. As I mentioned before, this was, we sort of recorded two things at once. You can go watch us talk about uh, Jalen Wright and Joey Halsley's promotion in the video on Thursday. And then this one, of course, is on Friday. We appreciate you watching everything that we do here on the A to Z Sports channel. Uh, Mondays at 4 p.m. is the regular podcast. Tune in then when we go live. And uh, I guess we'll talk to you all then. See you guys later.